Yes, I was muted. Thank you very much. <laughs> See, the chat is extremely useful. Can you hear me now? Double checking. Is the audio good? Okay, <clears throat> let's start by talking about what I've been doing uh, in my local copy, which by the way, let's see where it is. So I've started using a prototype of the new X25519 um, API, which is what I want to implement in X Crypto Curve 25519 because the current API is a mess to use, doesn't have a lot of docs, uh, uses arrays, which I'm not a fan of. So yeah, let's start by pushing that. If you're curious, it's now on GitHub. Um, <clears throat> and then I tried to uh, dry up the um, add to 519 code and get it in like just reuse the X25519 code. Uh, but that did not work out uh, because um, there's the salt thingy. Um, so <clears throat> here, uh, X25519 recipient uses as salt the public key, which is the one of the recipient and the X2519 public part of the ephemeral secret. The problem is that at 25519, how we do it is that we add that tweak thing. But the two sides have to add the tweak to the same parts of the salt. So have to pick one of the two parts to add the um, uh, salt to, uh, add the tweak to, and I think I'm adding it to the public key now, but then really doesn't work with the with how I split the functions up here. Unwrap takes secret key, our public key, the peer public key, and like for this to work, the tweak needs to already be built into the thing that will be used for X25519, which is public key. But in the other side, we, we, build it, we build it into the other one. Anyway, this is just annoying and frustrating, but I'm just going to get on a branch. Um, commit that as a work in progress. And just so we don't walk over over it while I, I don't know, let it sit in my head. We'll just work on the common line tool today instead. I'll push it just so you can if people want to look at it mm, they can but yeah not ready yet and then we just change back avoid working on these two files and decide what to do today um, I think I'm streaming for like an hour or so. Um, <clears throat> what about, uh, for example, we definitely need dash um, O and dash I, uh, and I want to rewrite that whole um, stuff in the command anyway. So let's let's do that. Um, Let's 
let's do this. Also because I don't know if I have, yeah, these are should be old, but they are kind of uh, boring. And uh, this I kind of want to write a newsletter about. Um, sweet. So we just open command agate. And we also open the parsing stuff. Okay. Oh yeah, I also um, I also fixed the um, ed the base sixty four wrapping uh, so that it's mandatorily uh, wrapped at fifty six columns uh, in the body and everywhere else it's just as is. Um, merged a couple PRs, which folks I truly appreciate, but also I have like local changes almost all the time as you've seen. It's not time to make PRs yet. It's likely I will like, feel bad about just walking all over um, your chain and not being able to merge it. So just not time yet. Um, <clears throat> okay. Now, um, we probably want some more flags. So let's do, let's start with dash O and dash I, and then we'll look at the doc to see what else uh, we need. Um, out flag. Like that. Uh, which ones do we need to pass uh, this to, and do we want to open the file in advance? Hmm. Uh, conveniently, standard output is a OS file, so we can probably pass out os.file but os.file now you know take interfaces return um, um, take interfaces return um, struts so if we want to test this function at some point which we should uh, we will want to pass a right closer so that we can pass, uh, you know, a buffer or something like that. I wonder if we want the closer part. Probably. Hmm. And it seems more uh, idiomatic to just let this write whatever it has to write, and the main function can be in charge of opening files and um, and so on. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, Okay, so this becomes fprintf. Um, this encrypt will take both in io.reader out 
and your dot riser. We are thinking about whether w.close here should close the underlying rider. I think we even took a to do about it. Yeah, that was not helpful. Um, this is why you return structs instead of returning interfaces so that you don't break jump to definition. Oh, that's a, a stream rider. And now my jump to definition doesn't work anymore. Why? Well, the solution is always to kill couples, so. Boing. There we go. Yeah, this part. <laughs> Maybe? Not even sure we should do that. No, actually, we shouldn't do that. Uh, close is about closing the stream. But, you know, maybe, and I can't see how or why, but you might want to write, use this package to write to something, and then once it's finished written, calling close so that it flushes, uh, but still write to underlying connection or whatever, if you had some way to signal the end of a stream, which you don't, but still. Uh, so, yeah, pretty sure. Uh, so this uh, should be just a writer. Sounds about right. Uh, so encrypt take a destination, which is out now, and an input, which is in. And that that's all the changes we have to make. The crypt, same story. in and copy out there we go <clears throat> now we should probably check that the flags are being used correctly before we open and close files also we need to decide what to do if the file already exists um, I guess most tools ask you if you want to overwrite it I don't want to add a confirmation prompt though, because then that uh, needs a dash F to override it. Let's just fail if the file already exists. And you know, if you wanted to delete it, you can, well, delete it. So I think that's what OSCreate is for. No, or truncates. Okay, so we need to use some of this stuff. Um, What flags do we have? Okay, we sure, whatever. Append is not what we want. Create a new file if none exist. Use with o create file must not exist. There we go. So what's the behavior without neither truncate, exclusive, nor append. No, like seriously, it, it can either append to the file or append to the file, return an error or truncate it. But if I specify none of them, what happens? Unix is weird. Anyway.
I guess we should just let the U-mask do whatever it does. I guess most people will have a U-mask. We can check that later. Um, And same stuff for in. Just so we don't do this wrong, let's just the out file, let's open it right only. Well, open, we can probably just leave like that, but. Oh, it already does read only, fantastic. This way we'll notice if we got this wrong, if we swapped them. Uh, now, where do we check for invalid flag combinations? Ideally before creating the files. But I really liked having these in the switches because they're closer to the specific operations. Hmm. Guess we're copy pasting the switch. Kind of gross, but better than a forest of ifs, I guess. So we can't have in flag for this. Um, ah, yes. Um, I guess we should check for empty. Hmm. How do you know if a flag was set or not?
Looks like it just populates them all the time. So if it populates them all the time, um, we don't actually get to know whether it was used or not. But I guess you can set it to an empty string, so we could just use the empty string as the um, as the canary and not support dash o dash, which I guess is entirely redundant. So yeah, let's not bind ourselves into supporting that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do want us to be as strict as possible in what we take and then slowly, if people need usability things, start accepting them because I want the command line tool to have backwards compatibility. Um, so yes, there's, yeah, that probably the next thing we're doing also is a review of the parsers um, so that they all, Yeah, I want to rationalize the parsers a bit. Um, okay. Okay. Our flag can be used here, our flag can be used here. We don't have user yet, so we don't print that yet. Sounds about right. I think this is it. This was the entire, no, no, no. Um, Ah, there we go. We use fatal all over the place, so we don't get to actually use the defers. But I guess if we call fa uh, fa fatal, we don't care about closing the file and flashing it. And I suppose the kernel will flash it anyway for us. Maybe there's not even a point in closing a file before exiting. No, wait, wait, I definitely lost data like that. Um, you're supposed to close it normally, but these functions don't exit unless something went wrong and if something went wrong, well, whatever. Yeah, sounds about right. Okay, this may work. Um, have I mentioned yet in this uh, today how much I like doing go run package. Well, this is weird, but sure. <laughs> Wait, I thought there was a way to, like, if you did it uppercase, it did something cool. Oh, this is a type here end can be changed by placing a back quoted name. Okay. And then we imitate the format for this. There, pretty. Um, okay, let's try this. Um, I think I have a file, so we just do weird. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. Um, neat. 
works. Okay, um, next. Uh, how does it parse the... Oh, I guess the default location we should do. No, this, this, this is what I wanted to change, yes. Um, There's parse identity files and parse SSH identity, and like I definitely want them merged. I guess part of this is deciding what we do about password protected SSH keys, which. Oh, wow. Why did this work? Okay, Dimitri pointed out that these are swapped. But why is this working? We've tried it with dash i hello. So in flag was set, but out flag was not set. So out was still standard input. Wait, what? Are you telling me we wrote to standard input and we saw the output? I... So this doesn't work because it's trying to read from standard output. So terminal emulators show you what you write to f file descriptor zero or whatever the file descriptor of the standard input is. What happens if I send standard output to dev no? I, what? So if you do something like, you know, the, the usual incantation to hide all output, it still, I don't know how I feel about this. Programs can write to standard input and terminals will show it. And it bypasses sending, you know, standard output and standard error to... I... I... I truly don't know how I feel about this. Also, I should not have pushed it. No, it's definitely not something related to Goran because this part is shell based. Like this is the shell sending both standard output and standard error to dev null and the output still comes out.
I... Wow. I... Okay, moving on. <laughs> uh, no, I need a glass of water, I guess. Uh, but also, no, it's weird. Anyway, uh, moving on, maybe Go should open standard input read-only read and standard output write-only? You know what, I'm having an issue. Anyway, next. Uh, we've got another maybe 15 minutes. What can we do? Yes, yes, the parsers, right. Um, Oh yeah, we were stuck deciding uh, whether what to do about password encrypted SSH keys. Um, we will have to read their public keys, make them available, and then wrap that in in a thing. Um, probably a decryptor that when actually used uh, invokes, asks for the, um, asks for, for the password. Um, so I guess for now we can just not implement them and then we'll write something that when it finds one, it returns a wrapped ssh.private key and we'll have to plumb that all the way down. That's going to be painful. But no, I guess like we just return one of these signers um, that when you actually call sign, um, asks for the um, asks for the password because that's why we have the little hash of the public key there to know if we need to use them or not uh, because we don't want to ask for the password of all your SSH keys every time you use it, right? Um, uh, 
there was some discussion on the issue tracker uh, about which one to use and I don't know I feel like we had this discussion when we uh, created user config there and at this point might as well stick to that so Okay, <clears throat> we'll do that another time. Uh, now, how does this currently work? It opens the file, that's useful, and then reads line by line, only accepts empty lines or lines that uh, uh, comments or lines that are an identity. Okay. Uh, I guess if, how does a SSH private key look like? That's helpful. That's also extremely helpful. By the way, are we looking at files for encryption? No, only at arguments so far. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I think I had written in the spec that we're going to accept files of recipients because that way you can have like a file with a list of recipients and then there's aliases, but um, hmm. Oh, hey, hi, Strad. Uh, I, I think you're involved in discussion around this. I think these should be the default locations anyway. Um, the keys uh, file in the default config folder is effectively already that. No, I, I mean for encryption. Uh, we should pro probably accept a um, file with a list of public keys to encrypt to. Uh, yeah, as well as aliases, but one thing at a time. Uh, things that are not supported, we can always support later. Things that are already supported but are wrong, we have to keep forever. Oh yeah, of course we want uh, f to support files because it will be the same as um, a remote URL. Uh, because we'll support having a remote URL of a list of um, uh, recipients. Um, yeah, you can use local files for um, uh, predefined groups and um, yeah. Yeah. Um, local files for groups and uh, remote files for um, your identity over your HTTPS uh, thing. Um, okay, anyway, uh, identity is parsing. Uh, I feel like there should be 
Oh yes, we are going to look at how an identity looks like. Okay, how does a RSA one looks like? Okay, is this the old format though? The new format? The answer is probably in ssh.parse, I thought we have it here. Wait, this makes no sense. This is about identities. So multiple keys in the same stream. Hmm. Uh, yeah, there we go. There are a lot of different formats. There was a whole discussion on the issue tracker about um, pen the code, not letting you know if there's a broken pen block. And that's going to be kind of annoying here. Wait, the new private format supports multiple keys? Well, we don't. Solved. Hi, Joe. This is my to do now. Wait, the code error? Okay, what? Oh, fantastic. When it fails, it just tries the next. Sounds like I want exactly what we told that person on the issue tracker that you shouldn't want because pen is made to have preambles. That's the point of pen. But now if I want to distinguish a file where there's pen and one there where there isn't, uh, I hate this. Okay. New plan. Um, you do not get to mix uh, SSH and AGE private keys because what are you doing? Not in the same file. Solved. 
Um, so I guess we just try them both. What's the right order to go in here? What will this do? If it doesn't find any. I don't want to go through the file twice. Uh, it kind of mm, gross, uh, but I also don't want to um, hide all errors. Like essentially, if we find a SSH private key, but it's not one of these, we should tell the user. We shouldn't just go like, oh, well, I guess it was a um, pri uh, private key file instead. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, mm. <clears throat> feels like if there is a line that goes dash, 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 begin, that it should be interpreted as like, we should look for open SSH. Otherwise we should just look for Age. So maybe we just keep running the parser, even if we find a malformed uh, key. And if we find a line that goes dash dash begin, uh, we try to parse the whole file. I can't think of a way to do this without doing it twice or doing it horribly. Yeah, we're just putting a to-do here.
Okay, let's do something a little like this. Um, we scan the lines. If it starts as a comment or as an empty thing, whatever, continue. Uh, if we haven't hit an error yet, we try to parse it as a x one nine identity. The first time we find one, we keep in mind the error. Uh, otherwise, Uh, otherwise, otherwise, um, if If it starts with begin, instead we seek the file brutally. Um, how does this interact with scanner error now? I kind of don't want to know. Um, I will redo it. Um, Well, thankfully, this returns an error, so... This stuff will go away. We're not keeping the seek, but I just wanted to, like, look a little like it will look like. Also, I like this idea. Um, you don't get more than 16 megabytes of private keys. Let's say, yeah, let's say that. Um, so 16 megabytes is going to be Okay, I don't know what I'm doing at this point. Uh, it's getting late. Um. <laughs> mm. Kilobytes, megabytes, this is a megabyte for 16 megabytes. There we go. It's 24.
This will all change. Um, yeah, essentially how I want to change it is to just pour the entire file into a bytes buffer using a limit reader and then use that and then just rewind the bytes buffer, which by the way is not a thing. So because once you spend a bytes buffer, it's spent. So we'll have to do, is there such a thing as bytes.buffer.clone? Uh, no. So we'll just pour it into a bytes buffer, then take bytes and make a reader out of it. Actually, let's do that. Let me ask, um, can't you read their peak before creating the scanner to guess? But technically in pen, you can have stuff before the begin line. So I don't want to bind us to only things that have that at the beginning. Like the reason we're going through this is that we're trying to honor pen being pen. So, um, Okay. Uh, oh wait, it's your util. No, uh, buffer. No. Uh, oh, bytes. Dot new reader, isn't it? Cool. 
and then we can skip this bullshit and we can pass this trade here I can take uh, IO dot reader here and drop the limit reader here much cleaner Oh, also we are dropping this on the floor. Damn it. Um, there we go. This should work. Now we just go back to where we came, we drop all the stuff. Excuse me. Seems to lose sync of files from time to time. Um, okay. This might work. Let's try it. Okay. Um, Okay, that's good. Uh, and if we add Yeah, it works. Sounds good. Haven't really tested like for other issues, but uh, just checking that errors still get deleted more stuff than we added sounds like we did a good thing probably should be writing tests right now I should definitely be writing tests um, push and uh, out unless anybody has uh, uh, questions. Uh, as I said today, I was going to just 
stream for a little uh, while and we're already up an hour and yep um, I have to be at breakfast at 9 30 tomorrow so uh, I did see a question earlier in the chat hold on um, oh yeah what am, are my thoughts on Nako uh, which you know salt uh, the idea is good the library is terrible libsodium is definitely what you should be using uh, the C interface has a thing where you have to pass a pointer to 16 bytes before your input and those 16 bytes have to be all zeros otherwise it doesn't work I Yeah, um, I, mm. um, also, uh, as, so that's for about the library, uh, about the, so like use Lipsodium. Lipsodium is the best thing since, uh, sliced bread. Uh, now the formats, uh, the secret box is totally fine. Um, the other one, the, the, the like box, the the um, public private key one, I kind of hate uh, because it first uh, nonsense. Uh, you're supposed to make sure that the two parties don't um, don't use the uh, no. I'm uh, sorry, uh, I'm conflating two things. No, uh, the, the part that I hate about box is that it's not directional. So if you take your uh, key and the other one and you send a message encrypted with box, it can be reflected back to you and you can't tell that it was you that sent it. It will decrypt as if the other side sent you something. And that's not what people want. And in general, usually people don't have that uh, situation where they have a long-term public key on the other side. Uh, you saw what we just did here in Age, like we use uh, a ephemeral static Diffie-Hellman. So what is, um, uh, what is uh, better to do is using Libsodium's um, anonymous boxes, which I have a note uh, about implementing in Xcrypto which do instead the nicer thing um, where it just lets you um, um, <clears throat> um, like j doesn't make you uh, generate your local key and it just creates an ephemeral key locally and you just send and you don't have the problem of the recipient thing because there is none of that anyway so yes, that's where stand of Nako. Um, then, oh, uh, nice. Ah, that was wrong. Oh, nice. There's a man page for uh, Age made by Anthony. Uh, thank you. Um, this, uh, yeah, I mean, actually, if you want to, yeah, as soon as the, the common line is, um, is done, uh, we should, uh, we should have definitely have, oh no, this is not just a man page. This is an implementation, isn't it? Hold on. Um, nice. Uh, yeah, I, I love the fact that we have multiple implementations. Uh, do you f think that... 
I would like anything that installs a uh, agate binary to use the same uh, command line flags is the only thing I would ask. Like essentially, if you want to experiment with a different uh, CLI, I think I'd appreciate a different name, like um, Strad uh, is calling it Rage, so that uh, because it won't have the exact same uh, interface. And if instead it's the same uh, command line interface, I'm okay with being called agates. Just that you know, if a blog post post gives you some uh, comments, uh, it's that way. It's going to be clear uh, which one it is. But also, if mm, you're saying this is a fork, and if you mean for this to just be merged back uh, at some point, I would definitely appreciate the man page. I haven't seen uh, the code, but yeah, I. Um, also, is this the same man page viewer of uh, man.openbsd.org? Oh, it's man.doc, yep, yep, it is. Neat. Cool. Um, uh, Nice. All right. Um, yeah, may maybe open uh, a, a PR uh, for the um, for the man page. I'm not, as I said, I'm not ready for code PRs because I don't know. I I've, I've published it sooner than I would publish anything to start uh, working on on it so that we could uh, so that people could see it as I was streaming it. But I don't. I still have like ideas in my head I want to put into code, but the man page, yeah, fantastic. Uh, it should, I would be very happy for Aga to ship with a uh, ready man page. Cool, folks, gotta go. Uh, I'm waking up at this point, I guess, in eight hours. So yes, clock is ticking. See also GPG. Hold on a second. <laughs> okay, fair enough, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks everybody for, um, for being in chat. Uh, I'm really enjoying this. I might do it uh, more often. Shorter streams, uh, so let me know if you feel like the shorter, like, actually, let me know what you feel like is better. Longer streams in the weekend or shorter streams in the evenings. Uh, I'm on Twitter. That's the easiest way to, um, to reach me. So, cool. Thanks all. Bye.